Debt can't be erased. It can't be covered up. You can sweep it under the rug, but eventually that policy will haunt you. Even Janet Yellen is shaking it up in the news recently, agreeing with these facts. Central banks can't buy the debt without causing a hyperinflation. There's simply no way around it. So it looks like we're in for some real pain ahead. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the Great Debt Crisis, specifically focusing on the US, then we're gonna get into Canada. I wanna talk about real estate, I wanna talk about debt, home equity line of credit, credit cards, and everything else in between, so let's begin by taking a look at this. This article is talking about Silicon Valley, how expensive it has become, San Francisco, all the wealth that has been accumulated in this area. The unfortunate part is that the average people, they can't afford to live anywhere near there, but they have to work there, and that is causing a major problem. The big commutes, the traffic, and of course the disparity in between the haves and the have-nots. Out of the Guardian, basically what they're suggesting here is that now, today, Today, the Zuckerbergs and the Musks are today's Carnegie's and Rockefellers, and the low-wage drivers at Lyft and Uber are the factory workers who work unprotected from dawn to dusk. This area may have the greatest concentration of wealth in human history. There is no longer any room for teachers, medical technicians, firefighters, or construction workers who may drive two or more hours and sleep in their cars for an hour before work to avoid longer commutes. It's not sustainable. Renting a bed in a van here costs between $500 and $900 a month. It has gone so over the top, there's absolutely no possible way that this can be maintained for an extended period of time. You're going to have a revolt, you're going to have upheaval, and I'm going to be following it. And if you're in this area, I'd like to know exactly what you see because I'm reading the articles and it looks like it has begun. Looking at New York, the luxury market had exploded. It was going crazy. The forecast for Manhattan's luxury residential market continues to be bleak as year-to-date sales declined for the third consecutive first quarter. So things have changed, but we still need to recognize the fact that there are places in New York that are going for multi-million dollars, sometimes over a hundred million dollars, and we don't have any shortage of all these new fancy places that are opening up. Up. But definitely there is a problem and that is individuals who have been living in their home for decades and decades. It is now worth, let's say, tens of millions of dollars. They can't find buyers. That's what's happening here. They're stuck in the place. They want to downsize. The home is way too big for them. They're paying property taxes left, right, and center. And then they can't leave because there's no way that anybody's going to buy these places at these prices. They're not looking for these type of homes. They are not looking in these areas. There are not as many buyers and so on. This article is talking about retirement savings. The bad news is that almost half of Americans approaching retirement have nothing saved in a 401k or other individual account. And somehow that's better than a few years earlier. This is a punishment that people are receiving today from the extremely high taxation as well as the other factors that they spend too much money on things they don't need. 48% had nothing put away in a 401k style defined contribution plan or an individual retirement account. Now, if they were investing in other things, I would say that's fine. However, I bet you a large percentage of these people are not investing at all. They have spent everything they can and they are just pushing themselves to the edge. Towards the bottom, this is really what it comes down to. Social security provides most of the income for about half of the households age 65 or older. What happens if they slash this social security? What happens if they reduce the amount that people are getting paid? They're gonna be in big trouble. They don't have the savings, they don't have enough of the savings, the expenses continue to rise, and you're going out on a fixed income, and if they do increase the amount of social security people are getting, it's at such a low percentage that it's not going to make up for the fuel cost, for the food, for the energy, and so on. So these people, they are going to be heavily burdened by what's happening right now and will continue to get worse, particularly as the next crisis unfolds. 
This is an incredible article about Canada talking about the debt situation. It makes what's happening in the US seem like nothing. Household debt in Canada, a nation generally known for moderation, has reached levels that could be qualified as excessive. Yes, it is actually. It's not could be qualified. Canadians owe $2.16 trillion, which as a share of the GDP is the highest debt load in the group of seven. In Canada, it's an honor to have an extremely high debt load, particularly in real estate. If you have a big house, it doesn't matter how much of a mortgage you have. You are a king, and that's the way that people look at it. Of course, they don't know that they're about to be burned, but here we are. People are freaking out even though interest rates are not far above historical lows. Money still costs nothing. This is a point that I have made so many times before, and yet the general public isn't aware of it. Further down in the article, they made some other points here that I wanted to touch on very quickly. They mentioned how low interest rates sparked a boom in borrowing with the ratio of debt to disposable income rising to a record 174% in the fourth quarter. That's up from 148% a decade earlier. So since the financial crisis, which didn't really hit Canada as hard as it did the US, was seen as being a time that, hey, we should be increasing the amount of debt we have because we're doing so fantastic right now. But this is so senseless and unfortunately the average person is getting themselves deeper and deeper into a hole. It was really a surprise to people when the home values fell in 2018 for the first time in three decades and the slide has extended into this year. I showed you this before, I had been covering it as it was happening, initially it was rejected, no, 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 don't worry about it, now it's, oh well this is healthy for the market. So they changed their mentality here, no, it's not what you think. Interest rates, historically low, fuel the boom, people got too far into debt and then they maxed out every form of debt along with that. Their home equity line of credit, which I'll talk more about in a moment, their credit cards and of course their mortgages pushed themselves all the way over the edge in Canada. And despite what people believe, this does catch up to them. Households are feeling the strain. The debt service ratio, a measure of how much disposable income goes to principal and interest payments, climbed to 14.9 in the fourth quarter, matching, almost matching, the 2007 record high. And the fact that credit growth is running at its slowest annual pace since 1983 really says something about how bad the situation is. People dip into their home equity line of credits and they do so as if it's nothing. This is totally normal. It's totally fine. I've even seen comments on here. We see the advertisements all over television, billboards, posters, notifications coming left, right, and center. Don't worry about it. You've got a lot of equity in your home and over time, home value values always rise, therefore use a home equity line of credit. It's a fantastic idea. You can use it to invest. You can use it to renovate your home. You can use it to go on that vacation you really, really need to the Bahamas. But of course, this catches up to people on a per capita basis. Home equity line of credit balances in Canada were nearly $5,000. That's more than quadruple the US. So the US situation, it's terrible. It's bad. But in Canada, it's four times the amount worse four times there's no possible way that this isn't going to end in disaster i don't care what anybody says i talked about this back in my original book talked about it in my second book and talked about it hundreds and hundreds of times ever since then here on the channel because it is very clear what is happening anybody who's paying attention can see it and yet most people are still unaware here you can see the chart that household credit growth in Canada slowed down to the 1983 level. Just showed you that. The household debt to GDP, Canada tops the list. UK, then the US, France, and so on. Canada, congratulations for ending up in first place as bankruptcies edge up. Polos personally responds to Canadians' concerns. You have the extinguishing of the fires that takes place all the time. You have the central bank coming out trying to warn everybody the finance minister and everybody in between saying don't worry just pay down your debt be mindful of it everything's going to be just fine we will protect you and so on this is ultimately the case when people are getting too far and the government is worried but they don't want to admit it
These financial institutions are feeling the pain right now. JP Morgan reportedly to cut hundreds of jobs in asset and wealth management unit. You can see how they are going towards more automation, more robots. This takes place in not just the burger flipping type of jobs, not just delivery services. We are seeing it in the financial industry as well. If you've ever worked in a financial company, these big establishments, you know, basically all of them are going towards some form of automation, maybe a robo advisor or others. Regardless, this is the direction they're going. They're not going to rehire people after the next financial crisis. Last financial crisis, people eventually got their jobs back. At least most people did. And then this time around, though, they are been working specifically to ensure that they don't need to next time around. Oh, Janet, you give me butterflies in my stomach. Yellen took issue with those promoting MMT, modern monetary theory, who suggest, quote, you don't have to worry about interest rate payments because the central bank can buy the debt. That's a very wrong-minded theory because that's how you get hyperinflation. My goodness, Janet Yellen, you continue to surprise me. This was an excellent, absolutely excellent quote. You cannot have the central bank print money and buy up all the debt because it will cause a hyperinflation. It has happened so many times previously and yet even the central bankers are admitting it. One of the issues that she has brought up before is that the Federal Reserve doesn't have enough tools in order to backstop the losses for the next crisis which will eventually occur. What she's talking about here is the ability to intervene and I'll show you the quote, it could be useful to be able to intervene directly in assets where the prices have a more direct link to spending decisions, adding that buying equities and corporate bonds could have costs and benefits. Let this be a warning, next recession, probably going to have negative interest rates. The Federal Reserve is probably going to buy corporate bonds of companies like JP Morgan, obviously, and then they are going to buy stocks directly. The average person with no sense in their mind may think this is fantastic. If this happens, you're going to see the asset prices being supported by the Federal Reserve. Think about this, you've got seven shares of Amazon and you've bought them you saw the price coming down significantly. Now the Federal Reserve is buying the corporate bonds of Amazon and they're buying the shares. That's going to make them go higher. But doesn't that concern you that a central bank, an organization that doesn't have your best interests at heart, is now buying the assets of your country? You didn't give them permission, the public didn't vote on it, but this is what's happening in countries all over the world right now, whether it's Japan buying all the ETFs, they're buying the bonds, they're buying the stocks, China's doing the same, the ECB's buying everything essentially. This is coming to the United States. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate all of that. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything from the top to the bottom, from A to Z, the foundation, the history, the asset classes, how to make money, everything you need to know. Click on the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that is available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know about the real economic factors here today at play, this is a video where I talked about how 5,600 stores in the United States are closing down right here. Click on it and I will see you there.